and welcome to another edition of Everything You Love. I'm Rob Arnold, and I'm so glad you're here. So glad you tuned in. I know it's been a minute uh, since, since I've done the uh, Everything You Love show because I've been focusing on my quick riff series, teaching riffs, stuff like that for the guitar players out there. But I'm glad to be back here, back in the saddle, bringing everything you love. And uh, it's an exciting one today. Um, before that, though, if you haven't seen any of the prior episodes, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Go back and check those out. Lots of cool stuff, lots of information, lots of great stories and stuff in the prior episodes. But this one is going to be a special one as I sit down with my fellow gunslinger, my partner in crime, in the guitar department with our band Kamira, Mr. Matt DeVries. Matt is just an awesome dude with tons of spirit, lots of great energy, uh, as so many of you know. And we talk about his time in Fear Factory, um, his, his stint filling in with Lamb of God, our time together in Six Feet Under, touring the world there. I mean, we've shared the stages, we've shared many a drink, many a great meals, so many great laughs, so many great experiences, and just somebody that, uh, I'm really proud to know and proud to have had the opportunity to, to, to jam with um, and just to do so many rad things with. Oh yes, and we also get a look at two of his latest custom ESP guitars that I gotta tell you are absolutely gorgeous. I didn't even know they existed, so I had never even seen them before. He's like, oh yeah, have you seen these? And he breaks these things out. Wait till you guys see these. Um, but yeah. Strap in for this one because we catch up as if we haven't caught up in a long time. Well, because we haven't caught up in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy my conversation with the legendary, incredible guitar player and even better human being, Mr. Matt DeVries. All right, there he is. <laughs> you look, you look exactly like the picture you call when you called me a little while ago. The picture that comes up, the little iPhone emoji. I'll, I'll put it on the screen here, right here. But it looks exactly like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that one. So, where are you right now? Are you in a the dungeon? <laughs> yes, I'm in this uh, this cavernous dwelling. Um, no, I'm actually in my basement. But this is one of these like backdrop things here, and it's funny because the the day. Um, that I found out that like the COVID that, that, that Ohio was going to be shutting down, you know, and everybody was going to have to stay at home. Nobody knew what was going on. There's something else yeah. I actually want to mention about that too, um, that, that has to do with you. But the, the, the day that it shut down, um, I knew that I was going to have to start like making videos like at my house and stuff. So I ordered yeah. one of the things and the, the first, the, the one I found that I like was in China. So, and I ordered rush shipping too. I paid like 50 extra bucks, you know, to get rush shipping. It took like 80 days for this thing to arrive. And like, <laughs> And, and like I'm trying to communicate with them was the worst too because I'm writing I'm like hey I need this thing what's going on and they, their their replies would be things like you just wait longer <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I couldn't make any progress you, you wait longer you just and, wait uh, yeah uh, like, okay oh, man you're like oh okay <laughs> yeah. but finally it showed up and uh, yeah I, I like the look of it so that's cool but oh, uh, oh, I like it dude so how have you been yeah, yeah, that looks good back there too. I like how you got the uh, the acoustic going. I got I got the acoustic guitar, and then I got Leonardo da Vinci, you know, painting or whatever. Nice. Right. Yeah. Nice. Are you are you still in uh, Boca Raton? Uh, yeah, I, actually, I'm in Deerfield Beach, so it's just south of Boca. Um, it's about it's, it's only about five ten minutes south <clears throat> of uh, Boca Raton. So um, yeah, it's about twenty five minutes north of Fort Lauderdale. Okay, cool, um, yeah. cool. And uh, you got your boys uh, with you, or you just see them often, or? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, not not tonight. I, actually, my my oldest son, Paige, he's in um, he's in Texas visiting his grandmother. She lives there, so um, he's there right now. And Austin's at his mom's house, at, right up right up north in Delray. It's only about twenty minutes, so so we split our time. So with the cool. boys, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, obviously it's, it's summer break now, but how are you dealing with, uh, like them being out of school and everything, uh, cause of COVID? Did you have to teach them and stuff or? No, no. Well, that, honestly that the, their mom did, you okay. know, she dealt with most of that. Um, but you know, I, I've been, I've been lucky enough to work, so it's been bittersweet going to work. Um, and, uh, she's been taking care of, uh, taking care of the boys as far as, uh, during the day. Um, so I didn't have to worry about that. But now that now that school's over, now we're just trying to keep them occupied, and then we'll see what happens, you know, upcoming because Florida's so um, one of the epicenters now. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll oh, see what happens. Yeah. It might be online again, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. Like we we heard we've been hearing mixed mixed things up here too about uh, you know it might be like a half day or it might be two two three days a week ago. Now who knows again just because cases are upticking and stuff. So I guess yeah we'll just wait and see what find out what happens. You know. Yeah. But it's, you mentioned you mentioned weird. you've been working. Tell everybody. So first I just wanted to say that it's it's I appreciate you you coming on to talk here I, I, all the time. People are like, what's Matt doing? How's Matt? Everything like that. And I'm always like, you know, one of these days I'm just gonna find out. So. <laughs> That's what we're doing here, and I'm sure everybody's going to want to, want to do what you've been doing. We want to want to know what you've been doing. You know, if you're working, I hope I hope whatever is you're working. I can never remember exactly. I feel like it has something to do with aeronautics or yeah, aircraft, sure. or whatever. But whatever I, I, it is, we all hope it's something that you're doing something ferocious with those hands. You know, that uh, <laughs> it's some way applying them, applying uh, them somehow. Uh, you know, I, I work I work I, I work at desk now. It's weird. I work at nine to five, which is so weird. For the past three years, I've been working. Um, I, I've been working at the airport, Boca Raton Airport. Uh, I, I, I basically uh, my title is a service writer, so I write quotes for aircrafts that come in for um, aircraft maintenance. Um, so you know that's the main gig. You know it's a sales position. So um, when uh, you know you get your the one percenters come into the private airport and they got to get their planes worked on, you know I'll, I'll you know try and sell them you know some maintenance or write them a quote. So that's about it in a nutshell. So yeah, I've been working, working, working the nine to five. Yeah. How did you fall into that? Uh, yeah, how did you, I, had, I had a friend. I had a friend that was, you know, I, 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 had, I had met someone down here um, that got me into it. You know, that was like, you know, that I was looking for work, looking for anything. You know, basically, you know, I, I knew I wouldn't be touring anymore, or, or at least full time. So. Um, I had met a friend down here, and and they were like, well, you know, if you if you want to work, you know, work a nine to five, you know, I could probably get you in. So I, I just I just fell into it, honestly, and it's it's right down the road from where I live, so that's about it, you know. I'll bet you're good at it too. I'll bet you're good at sales. <laughs> Are you? Eh, I, I I like to think so, you know. Um, I mean, it's it, a it, good way about you that I bet people are like, all right, I, I can trust <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think um. You know, I, 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 I like people, and I like talking to people, so I think the people trust me. So I, I think it works. You know, yeah. it, it helps. Uh, all right, yeah. You, <laughs> I, I remember the first it's, time. It's weird, I, though. It's nothing I've ever – it's nothing I ever thought I'd be doing at this point in my life. You know, I, what I'm best at is, is uh, yeah, either music or being on, being on stage or whatnot. But at the same time, you know, life happens, and you get older, and uh, i got to support the kids and – whatever's thrown at you, you know, you, yeah. Uh, so I, uh, for now, this is what I'm doing and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody's adapting and you know, yeah, you, you just fall in, fit in, get in where you fit in. That's, you know, it says that vanilla yeah. ice. You ever watch the vanilla ice, Pro- vanilla ice project? No, no, but it, it, I, I, my, my friend watches it all the time. He loves him. And I'm like, Oh, I remember when I met him. Remember, oh. remember um, what's the drummer's name? Uh, seven. Um, from Dallas. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sabrina's brother, right? Yeah, exactly. So he he was played drums for Vanilla Ice, and I remember they played um, the club that was next to Christie's down in the flats on the West Bank. And um, a- anyways, long story short, they, they played there, and I got to meet him. He was so fucking cool. Cool. He was yeah. one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And I guess, you know, obviously he lives out here. Yeah, uh, he's living houses he's, down in mansions. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's he's mad cool. But uh, yeah, my friend watches it. That friend I work with watches that show all the time. So yeah, it, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to talk about uh, some of my my early memories of you. That uh, it just sparked my my thoughts about that because, like when I said you are such a nice guy, it's funny that the first time I saw you, 
I just remember thinking like, whoa, that guy's evil. Same with same with Hagar. Oh, uh, like, really? Oh, well, yeah. Hagar, yeah. But me? <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, just Ascension. So H- just Hagar had the 666 yeah. sticker on his yeah. face, so everyone thought he was evil. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And he definitely looked evil, but you look mean and, 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 and evil, you know, just the music you guys are doing. So just to bring everybody up to speed that may not know, Matt and the Camira's original guitarist, Jason Hagar, played in a band called Ascension, and Andles and I played in a band called Sanctum, and Mark and Jim played in a band called Skip Line. We were all from the Cleveland era playing together, but but Andles and I were younger, and before Sanctum would, were doing anything, we'd go to shows and see Mark and Jim's band, and Matt and Jason's band, and Matt and Jason played in an awesome band called Ascension, which I revisited today. Just to, man, it's everybody should check those out. I'm definitely going to link them here somewhere. Check out uh, the first record, Years of Fire. And then Abomination, dude. I remember getting Abomination just as like a kid. Me, me and, and George probably like got it from Perry's Rock Pile and then just listened to it in the car. We, we couldn't even wait to go drive anywhere. We just got it and went straight to the car and sat in the car in the parking lot and listened to Abomination, you know? And it was so awesome. awesome. So oh, and then, Matt's, Matt's nickname, MFA, is Matt from Ascension, which you, you guys have seen on his custom guitars and all that. And, and that's just a, a funny thing because Hagar would always refer to Matt as Matt from Ascension. Like, we didn't know what he was from or who, who he was, whatever. So, but just an inside thing. But anyways, dude, you're, you're Ascension, we go to those shows and they just crazy hardcore shows back in, like, the late 90s. And your guys' metal was just ferocious. And Chris Wood, your singer, was ferocious. And you guys were so awesome. He, he was, he was the, the showman. I think that's why people like us the most, at least live, was because Chris was insane. And um, he, he felt the music, and he, he literally, like, it wasn't a show. That, that's just what he did on stage, like, putting the mic through his through his shorts and through his crotch and singing into people's faces, and he loved it. He lived it. It yeah. was so cool. Yeah, I think that's what, what sold us live. Um, I think that's why so many people liked us besides the music was because of Chris. It was crazy. <laughs> and, and, and off stage, what is he? Was he like a spinal surgeon or something? Oh, or like... he, oh he's a physical therapist. So he went. He went to the whole, you know, schooling, the, the pre med, et cetera. And uh, now he's, uh, yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> he used to. I used to get mad at him, and and I, I look back, I'm like, wow, I was kind of a dick. But I used to get mad at him because he would skip practice, or um, he would be on tour. Like we would do tours down in my parents' minivan down the east coast, down south, whatever. He would be studying all the time. I, I would get mad at him, and he'd have books like this thick, studying physical therapy or pre med stuff or whatever. But like, please stop! And uh, well, eventually, when when he quit, I, I was I was angry. But when I look back, I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, we do what you want to do. You yeah. know, it wasn't he wasn't gonna be in it for the long run like me or you. He was, you know. Yeah, I guess some people know they have a different path or whatever. We just put all our eggs in that basket but what what was it that broke ascension up like what was the end of it um i i think it was a combination of chris wanting to you know pursue that okay um that actually that was the camel that broke yeah how's the saying go (laughs) all the broke the camels thank you um (laughs) i i think that was it i mean initially that was it and at the same time as we're all like if you don't i mean you know more than you know, most people, if you don't have all four or five, six members, 100%, you're not going to last. And yeah. I think that I was the only one that was 100% towards the end of the band. So we just didn't we just didn't last. And uh, I was devastated. I, I remember being, being heartbroken and uh, not thinking that I would have a second chance at, at music at that time in my life. I mean, this is, I don't even know how many years ago or whatever. Um, but before, um, ringworm came, came along, you know, I joined ringworm in 99 or whatever. And then not too long after quit ringworm to join Chimera. Um, I, I didn't think I'd have another chance. And, you know, luckily I was, you know, I was lucky enough to, uh, do that. I forgot you were playing with ringworm. That's right. So what is- when they, when they asked me, like, I, I was the biggest fan in the world of ringworm integrity. Um, they, they were, they were gods to me. And then when James asked me, and I was friends with James, um, Human Furnace, when he asked me, I was like, yeah, of course. But then uh, two years later, you guys asked me to join Camaro. I was like, it was the hardest decision ever. But I knew that um, I wanted to join Camaro, so I ended up quitting Ringworm just after two years. Were you always cool with Hagar? 
throughout that the, the end? Were you were you cool with Hagar when he was in Kamira and you were in Ring Room? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were always we, we we remained in touch and we were still friends. Maybe not as much as we did when we were in Ascension together, but uh, but yeah, we were always in touch. And he actually hit me up. I, I think you know this, but uh, obviously you know this. But he he hit me up. <laughs> we were at what was that? Okay, on the. I can't remember the name of the strip club, but I was at a strip club with James from Ringworm, and we were just hanging out. And we were in the car about to go in, and then Hagar hit me up. And you guys were in Vegas at the time, and Hagar had already quit or wanted to, you know, take some time off. And um, I was, I think, I think James was driving, and I was in the passenger seat. And he goes, or Hagar called me. I'm like, hold on, we're about to go in. And Hagar had asked me. I'm like, I can't really answer that right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll get back to you. I appreciate it. Uh, talk to you soon. And then it was the next day, I think, that I, I took the gig. So it wasn't more so that you, you didn't want some time to think about it. It was because you were sitting in oh, car with the singer right of your third band? Yeah, I was already – I was in Ringworm <laughs> you know, right next to James. And, and he's still one of my best friends in the world. You know, we talk to this day all the time. But I, I didn't – I was like, oh, God, what do I uh, – I got to go. Yeah. So you, you you were aware of of Kamira what Kamira was doing at that time. So obviously we had been signed to Roadrunner at that time, and we were probably out with. You had just gotten signed to Roadrunner. Um, yeah, obviously we played shows together. Yeah. Um, I think Kamira opened up for Ascension at the Euclid Tavern. <laughs> um, and I don't even remember if that was that, how long before that, but uh, you guys blew the blew blew the fuck up, and it was impressive and. I loved uh, your record. I was so impressed. I was like, this is the shit I want to do. And once I was eventually asked to join the band, I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, good. (laughs) I was like, please. Um, uh, It it wasn't, I I didn't even have to think about it. I I knew for a fact that I wanted, whether you guys were signed or not, that was what I wanted to do. You know, that's what was cool about uh, Kabiro. So, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. That's yeah. that's awesome. I remember like inter- yeah, it, it just clicked for me right there that we had we had probably gone out on a couple like like I think maybe like a road rage tour or something with El Nino because I remember your first show with us like <laughs> introducing you to El Nino. My, I think that was my first tour. Was uh, yeah, maybe rage. switched. <laughs> I remember. Do you remember <laughs> we were in? Um, it was Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I remember uh, El Nino had that RV, and I walked up. And I walked in the RV and I left the door open. <laughs> and then, fucking, like, um, what's his name? Shivari's like, the fuck? You think AC grows on trees? Close the fucking door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. He's the yeah. funniest. Oh, he's him the funniest. and Jim and that was just, yeah. all those you know, guys. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So many, so many great memories from back then. Yeah. Been going to Europe with those guys. Mm hmm. We have so many inside jokes too. The I cabs, high school American beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for everybody out there, you know, like it's different now. But back when Kamira first started going to Europe, refrigeration really wasn't that big of a thing. It's like in dressing rooms. I don't think it was um, invented over there yet. There'd be these like like cases. At least, of- at least not in buses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was or, Andals. Andals said it best. He said, oh, "What do you say?" Um, how do you describe a refrigerator over there? He said, um, um, oh, Jesus. I can't remember exactly what he said. It was so funny. Is it room temperature? Yeah, a room temperature. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. If, if there even is a, re- a refrigerator, it's more like a room temperature. I was like, I, I still remember when I think about that, I remember the backstage of download, the carlings. The crawling yeah. ears and how warm they were, <laughs> so gross. <laughs> I mean, and 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 for people overseas, it's normal, or whatever. But if you're not yeah, used to not, drinking yeah. warm, dark beer, yeah. uh, you're used to drinking ice cold American beers. It's tough yeah. to get those bad boys down. But yeah, you got to do what you got to do. You know, and late night tends not to be so bad. <laughs> but uh, you know, trying yeah. to warm up with a, for a show with a warm beer is kind of tough. Oh, it's rough. But it's so rough. so. One day, I don't know where we were, the Czech Republic or something, somehow a case of Budweiser arrived. Do you remember that? We were like, no way. You know, there's Budweiser's here. Yeah, I think it was Czech. I think it was Czech. It was so weird. We're like, 
Yeah, yeah. Right, it was like a mirage. We like somehow we had like six or seven ice cubes, and so we were able to like get a couple on there or whatever, and just get them chilled up a little bit. Six you know? or seven. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, you know, if you know, you know, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, that's so good. So, uh, of course, everybody wants to know musically. It's been a while now, a few months. Uh, there was this news of um, of you of joining a new project, ninety three. Is that what it's called? So, Just 93? Yeah. So so um, so Brian Werner uh, became a friend. It was like one of those, you know, uh, culture room down here in Fort Lauderdale. Come here. Yeah, yeah I remember that place. I, I started bartending there, you know, part time every now and then. And um, I have a friend that's a GM there. His name is Damian. He's just become a great friend. Anyways, even when I'm not working or whatever, I'll go down there just to hang out and see metal shows. And and Brian Werner would, from Vital Remains was was always hanging out or whatever. He'd be there every now and then. He just be, he was just cool as shit. So we just started hanging out. And um, he he uh, you know mutual love for you know football. He would always invite me over for you know Sundays or or even Monday nights uh, football. And so I started going over there just hanging out, shooting the shit. And, he started asking me like off the rip if I wanted to be in band or you know if I wanted to join a band or I kept saying I don't know I don't have time I don't know and he was persistent as hell so I finally you know after I don't know how long I finally said okay I'll, I'll commit to uh you know at least the recording mm -hmm. um so since then I mean it's it's pretty cool I mean Tim Young's in the band and some other like ridiculous players are in the band uh Chris Giao I, I can't even pronounce um and then right the uh kiev like they're just sick players um mm -hmm. so i know it'd be fun i know it'd be fantastic to be a part of but at the same time so they've been they've been writing they've been doing their own thing um but it hasn't come to fruition yet i know brian i was just talking to him the other day he said it's, it's gonna start happening uh soon so i, I think i'm gonna be part of uh the recording we'll see if there's a, ever any shows but at the same time i you know i I have no plans to tour or do anything like that. Um, but I, I can tell you the music's pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. 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 Cool. Sick players. I mean, the musicianship is great. I mean, you know, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Tim. Drunk, and and drunk. Brian, was he, Brian was the singer of, uh, of Vital? Of Vital, yeah. Because yeah. I, the, I, latest I, singer, the latest singer. Yeah. I'm, 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 fr I'm only familiar with the Dechristianized album where I believe Glenn yeah. Benton sang on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right, right after that. Okay. I that I had, yeah, I don't quote me, but yeah, he did. Um, he was up until the the latest. I don't I don't know what they're doing now, but he just left the band maybe four or five months ago. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Tim Young, that's, dude. Yeah, Tim's Tim's incredible. Tim's sick, and I don't know if you know those players of Chris and Rithia or Rithia. They're so good. I don't we, know. It's, it's, got, I, like, I, I saw that Instagram. Like you'll, yeah. you'll see the links. Like they're so that, good. A little video uh, yeah. of them rocking, and obviously, yeah, they were just shredding it up. Mm -hmm. So that's cool, man. You know, I know everybody uh, will be itching to hear that, itching to hear what you uh, what you got going on. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's bass. So, and I, I can't say I don't love the bass, but at the same time, it's bass. Oh, it's, it's not, bass. It's not oh. my love. Yeah, it's it's not my passion. It's not my. You know why? Um, Everyone asks me, like, oh, what do you like more? I'm like, well, guitar, of course. I mean, that's my baby. But when I, the reason I loved being in Fear Factory is because Dino wanted me to play rhythm guitar on bass. Hmm. That's what I did. You know what I mean? Like, the right hand had to match him. He was very meticulous. He was very, like, you got to match everything I do. And I'm like, okay, good. This is a challenge because you know how thick those strings are. And yeah. you know how you pick, <laughs> and you know how Dino picks. Yeah, you picking everything he's picking. So I, it was almost a challenge, and I felt like I was still playing rhythm guitar. So that being said, um, bands like Ninety Three or like Six Feet, um, not as fun. But uh, we'll see what happens. Like I, uh, I would I would do Fear Factory again tomorrow, but at the same time, it's not guitar. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, like I, I miss playing guitar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we did that uh, reunion, I just felt, it felt so good to play guitar again. It was weird. Because going back to guitar was so weird. Like, it was like, 
it was miniature strings <laughs> but it felt good after we did it it felt good and i i felt that i i, I was as good if not better than i was back when we played those songs it was real cool yeah you know? awesome. yeah i i thought about asking you about that just reflecting on that because it's it, coincidentally i just saw you know how like like facebook when you sign on or, or in your feed or whatever it'll like be like your memories from five years ago or something yeah. like or, yeah. or whatever you know it happened to show me um it was this was june 24th so three four days ago yeah. it showed me a memory from three years ago which was the day that um i posted from my account those weird was, numbers yeah 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 that was when we started i know it was six months prior that i started warming up or relearning the songs so that makes sense <laughs> yeah well, I forget what it was, whether it was the date when tickets went on sale or the date of the show or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, so that was three years ago, uh, just a couple days ago that we, you know, years oh made the announcement and then started jamming. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, so now let's call it two and a half years later. Uh, tell us, reflect back on that night. Oh, it was so much fun. I, it, it was one of those shows where, um, everyone asked me, like, did you ever get nervous playing shows or do you ever get nervous? I said, no, I, I, the only time I was ever nervous, ever, with Kamira or with any band was either A, playing Cleveland, <laughs> or B, playing like something like Download. Like, I only remember being no nervous in 2007 playing in front of 80,000 people or playing in front of Cleveland because it's all your peers. So, um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was real cool. It was weird because, uh, yeah, it was just weird. Um, the fans were so cool, and you could tell how energetic and excited. I couldn't believe um, the meet and greet. I mean, that was what two and a half hours. <laughs> it was so cool. Like I, I couldn't believe the amount of fans. Like it makes you, um, it makes you look back and realize that you, you actually did something. You touched a lot of people, and when you're in the moment, you might not uh, appreciate it as much. And I didn't appreciate it as much back then. Exactly. I think back when when we toured Europe. Rob, when we did um, before download, obviously I appreciated that. But before download, we were doing, or maybe even the first or second download, or uh, the Astoria sold out. I mean, like we, I don't think I appreciated it because I thought it would last forever, and it didn't. But that being said, um, like every every show, even if it was two hundred kids, like you're playing how many miles away in some other country or whatever, and so. But but uh, revisiting our last Camera reunion, I, I think I appreciated every single minute of that night, and it, and it made me feel real good. Like um, I, I I don't remember being happier. You know what I mean? Like um, playing in front of people. Yeah. So that was so cool. Like I couldn't believe. Like I mean, it was sold out. Agora. We'd never done that. You know, we never sold out the Agora. That was two thousand people. Um, we never sold that, and we sold out six months prior. Yeah, that was nice. You know, then you could just be confident knowing that it was going to be a good show, even with that snowstorm and, a, and like, a couple yeah, hundred people that couldn't even show up. You people know? still showed up and, and uh, packed the house. That was, that was <laughs> cool. It, it went by like that, just like everything yeah. else does, though. When it's, a, when it's a big thing like that, like Download 2007, that went by within, like, a, a second. You know what I mean? I still watch that video. I'm like, I don't remember playing that. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Well, I, I often think to myself that, uh, that, that that that'd be the thing if I could go back and do that stuff. If we ever were to do it again, that I would stop and smell the roses because yeah. I just did. You know that download thing. Like like man, I want I would I want to step out on there again and see that again because I didn't. Yeah, at the time I didn't take it as anything. Uh, it was just another show, you know, sort of thing. Like I mean, it was awesome, but it was like just it was like all right, let's do it, you know, sort of thing. Where now I'd be like, whoa. I know? was luck I was lucky enough when when I joined Fear Factory to 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 do that a little bit. Cool. Like, uh, especially with Burton, uh, especially with someone, you know, me and Bert got real close. Like, we were like best friends. But especially with someone like that who's been through it way beyond us and at a higher level, et cetera. Like, we would, like, I would, we would go to every city. We would wake up early and, you know, walk around the whole city yeah. and enjoy it. Like, we would enjoy it like it wasn't going to happen again. Yeah. Whereas I wish I did that with Kamira. You know what I mean? I, I, I slept till four. Yeah. You know, I, Tell sound check, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't enjoy the fact that I was touring the world, and um, so I got to do that a little bit with Fear Factory, but at, at the same time, so it reminds me of the whole thing. Um, you really, as you get older, you appreciate what you've done, 
and we were so lucky and I really appreciate that we can we can have a carbon footprint on the world uh, of what we accomplished I mean that's mm. something to be said and I, I really appreciate that and I think it's cool and advice to young bands listen to us old guys talking about this and get up early and explore the cities I feel the same actually, way I do that actually, stuff now. actually wake up and do it yeah huh. just go yeah. And walk around just walk around you know, like you know, me and Bert would go to like, or actually with Devin, uh, Devin Townsend too. That, um, that Ryan, the drummer, we would go, we would go walk around like, we would visit cathedrals and just enjoy the architecture. Like it's stupid, you know. Get coffee, whatever. Yeah. Never did that with Camaro. We really no. did. We just, we just partied and thought it would never end. Yeah. <laughs> just cool. <laughs> Which. <laughs> That's a great quote right there. We just partied and thought it would never end. <laughs> Honestly, Rob, I never thought it would end. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it would just get better and better because I was lucky enough where with my life with music, it was it was always climbing, you know. But it, it's, yeah. Yeah, I never, I never thought it would come to an end either. Not, not in that way. I just thought that, uh, you know, oh, okay, you yeah. just considered it. You just never considered it. Like, this is what we're doing. This is, uh, yeah, this is how we're going. Well, yeah, you wake up every day. You're like, yep, here we go again, playing yeah. in front of a big crowd every day. Yeah, good time. So, yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit. You you uh, you made me think of uh, your, your stint in, in Lamb of God a little bit, where you uh, you filled in for John. And, and I always wow. like how. And, but I thought of this because you were telling me how you had to match match Dino, and yeah, his, and all the picks. And I remember asking you a while back. So, what did you do to learn that Lamb of God set? Did you just kind of like go so, around the, the notes so or whatever? John, and you, you, so John you called me. And uh, he had said, you know, it was a member of family that wasn't doing well. And he's like, would you ever do this? And this is like well beyond or well before I did it. Well, well before I filled in. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Are you kidding me? Fucking, uh, you know, I love that band. Um, and so it, it kind of, um, I didn't talk to him for, for a minute, for a long time, actually, for months. And then finally he hit me up. He's like, this is happening. I need you to fill in. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, uh, so after like kind of visiting um what was it songster that you 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 turned me on to songster yeah and it's so dope and i still love it i actually use it still cool and, tablature site for guitar players out there to learn tablature yeah, kind of songster. plays along the song with you and has tablature it's a cool, cool site songster with down, bar. speed it up like it was brilliant so after visiting that or whatever for a day or two i called john up i'm like hey bro i'm like um it's like i how you know how many notes do you follow off of <laughs> off of the band like um i'm like are you following like percussively are you following every note are you following like just the rhythm blah blah, blah. he's like i get paid by the note brother <laughs> <laughs> I play. He's like, <laughs> so basically he's telling me he plays everything the guitar is playing i'm like if really he's playing it i'm playing it and i literally had about a week maybe a week and a half so I was going on tour with, um, it was a co-headlining tour with uh, Kill Switch and Lamb of God. So they're doing a full set. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, it was it was literally one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life as far as uh, music is concerned. So I had a week, maybe two. I, I don't even think I had that. And uh, I was doing the whole Canadian run, which is only four or five shows. But um, it was, <laughs> I get paid by the note, brother. Yeah. I, I'll never forget that because, like, I listened to it and I listened to it with the headphones. Like, you know, when you listen to it, play a CD with the headphones, you push them in, you're like, holy shit, he is playing every fucking note. You can hear that bass. Really? John is awesome. <laughs> and a cool dude. And, uh, so, and, and a great dude. And um, so, yeah, luckily they liked me and I made it through it. I pushed it through it. But it was it was literally when I when I flew in, I played that first gig nervous as fuck in vancouver and then um i had a day off it was it was real cool because mark um the whole band flew there was one day off okay so you know me and you know canada when you go to the west from the west coast to the east coast you uh usually drive and you have a day off right yeah. so they had a day off but all of them flew you know and the band bus was just it, it would have just been me driving for two days but Mark was like, oh, you know, I'll roll with Matt. Um, so he, he, he rode with me, and then we, we jammed. Like, he was teaching me stuff, and we were, you know, uh, bouncing ideas off each other and whatnot. 
So that that was cool. So I got that one day, but then it was back to back shows. Um, so literally, it was it was I had the time of my life because we're playing, and you, you can imagine how big the shows were, uh, how big the shows were. But at the same time, like every opportunity I had to practice, I was practicing. <laughs> so it was it was a lot of pressure. Uh, but yeah, it was like, fuck. Those guys are awesome. Like they're they're players. You know what I mean? Like those are notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah proud of the success, man. I mean, wow, they're they're huge now, you know. Yeah. You know, what Mark said to me, Mark Mark was so fucking cool. He's like, and I, I told him, like, uh, I actually meant to tell you this one on one, but I'll tell you on in the interview. Um, uh, Mark Morton is so fucking cool. He's so down to earth. Like, you know, I consider him a good friend. And uh, we were we were talking. He's, I'm like, I'm so proud of you guys. Like, um, how big you've gotten, and this is huge. Like. This is everything I've ever wanted, and he, he goes to me. He's like, he's like, man, we just got lucky. Could have been you, Kamira. You guys work just as hard as us, and I'm like, that's fucking cool. You know what I mean? That he can be that cool and down to earth, knowing that they got to that level. Yeah. Be like, Matt, you could have been there. Like, it's luck. He almost said it's luck. Like he almost meant. To, you know what I mean? But I don't know. Those guys are those guys are cool as fuck. Cause they yeah. remember where they came from. Like each. Each individual, each each member, especially Chris. I, I still keep in touch with Chris. That dude's fucking awesome. Yeah, he's a super nice guy too. But just you know, strange that uh, he mm-hmm. had, that he, he had done what he wanted to do with the band, and now it's time to do something else. Yeah, sort of yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. You know, but what you're saying about Mark too. I remember being in a laundry mat with him somewhere in like 2003. <laughs> we were on that tour, and him saying well, to that, me. Those like, are days yeah. off. Like, hey, what are your days off like when people like fans are like on tour? It's like, eh, yeah, we can do laundry. Do laundry. <laughs> oh man, you remember going to some of those like, German and Belgian uh, like like laundry mats where oh. like you, that you, there was yeah. no English and and like and like there'd be like a machine on the wall that you had to put your money in to operate a a, <laughs> yeah, a, 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 a washing machine over there but no English yeah. and trying to figure that out and stuff. But you can't even work the machine. Like, yeah. can't even, what does this mean? Like, but, is it gonna dry? Nope. <laughs> but I remember Mark in, in this laundromat. We're just sitting there waiting for our clothes to dry or something like that, and him being like, "Yeah, you know, man, I don't know if I'm going to do this too much longer. You know, I, I, I might, I might just go back to work and stuff. I, I don't know if I'm feeling it. I mean, it's cool and all and stuff." And I'm just like, "Really? Huh. Well, I'm, I bet he's, I bet he's glad he stuck it out." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the new record's so good. You heard it? Ah, uh, yeah, I heard a couple tunes. Um, I haven't, I haven't picked up the whole record yet, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously those guys don't disappoint. You know, art's killing. Hurt? Art, his magic. Do you yeah. Remember Art's magic? Yeah. yeah, people don't know that. Art's a magician. <laughs> Art's yeah, a real magician. Yeah. We did a lot of touring with those guys with uh, and uh, yeah, he's a cool. That, that's cool because I did some magician stuff when I was a kid, so I, I was real stoked on that that he's out there just you know. <laughs> I know and, I couldn't believe it. Every every time Art would come on the bus, I'm like, come on, just yeah. do a trick, do a trick, bro, just do a trick. Yeah, and he's so quick with the hands, with the coin tricks uh, especially. Yeah, light a hand. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, one other thing that, uh, I wanted to mention was, um, I just, I just put out a, put out a video, uh, for this quick riff series thing I'm doing for, uh, for, uh, for comatose actually today. And, oh, um, okay. the, the stick a knife in your enemy riff. And so Wait, many people, that was, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, eight. Right. So I, what, I, what I do you mean? Oh, eight. I feed. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so many people ask about that and love that scene where it's me and you. I think that. I, so this is what I want. Is that also the shot of vodka? Is that is that the same like um, scene where you? Like, you come to... <laughs> I think so. I tried to like find it real think, quick online, think, but yeah, I think we we had a couple of those nights where I would just come in the back lounge and you'd be jamming, or I'd pick up your guitar or whatever it was, where it was a sick fucking riff. We're like, dude, dude <laughs> get it. Do you remember when, oh, this was, see, this is a cool moment to me. Like, one of my favorite songs we ever wrote was Resurrection. And um, do you remember when um, we were writing, like, I don't know, it, it took a while to write, it took a while to find it. And then once we found it, we were writing the riff. And then um, you were playing and I was kind of like, and you're like, oh, I know this is going to be good. Because <laughs> you could tell that I was already feeling or hearing what the riff was going to be like i don't know those, regardless like those, those kind of um those kind of memories are real cool because we would always click like that without yeah. anything before 
like we would just write a riff. Like um, I always thought that I was not a great songwriter. Um, you were the great songwriter, but I would just come up with a riff and you'd be like, oh shit. And then you'd do your own thing to it and then we'd bounce back and forth. You know, that's what I thought was cool. And that's what that's what was lacking, in my opinion, towards the end of the career is uh, we just didn't jam together, you know. Totally yeah. agree. Two things on that. One, give yourself more credit because you are an incredible songwriter, too. <laughs> like, and, and again, I'm going to stress this. Everybody check out these uh, for Matt's band Ascension, where he writes all these songs and you can listen to hear, hear these riffs. And Yeah, but and, that's that's riff after riff. There's no chorus or verse. That was riff after riff. <laughs> that's right. Well, there's that style, too. So, yeah, if the okay. riff after, okay. if you don't care about typical song structure, then you're not, you're not going to miss it with uh, with these Ascension songs. But they're, they are totally awesome riffs. But the second part of that is, man, is what I do think back. I 1000% agree that that the music slowly degraded as there was less interaction and writing together. But some of my best memories are being in the practice spot and just writing. I can picture you with the, the full stack behind you, and I, I probably had one behind me as well, and us talking about it. Like the self-titled writing, uh, the writing cycle yeah. for me was just so fun because we it was I couldn't wait to get there every day. You oh, know? Was that, and, and and for those of you that don't know, it was six days a week, eight hours a day. This is a yeah. full job. Like bands out there, drink this beers all day. This is what we did. Yeah, it was a full time job. It was great though. I look forward to it every day. Uh, yeah, not that we were waking up at six a.m., but at the same time, we were. It was eight hours a day, close to it, yeah, and probably noon to eight or something. Six hours, you know, five six hours um, a day. But I yeah, mean, we worked hard, and it was so much fun. I, oh my god, it was so. Yeah, much, dude. I would look forward to it every single day. Like I would. I would go home and then look forward to the next day. You know, we had, we had it. We had a tape. Yeah. Having to remember that stuff. Remember, like, you know, having to just remember, like, a song like Bloodlust, because we weren't recording oh, at the time. Course. You'd have yeah. to remember the, the, that seven and a half minutes or whatever, you know, of, of those tunes. Yeah. And, um, even Resurrection, you know, just you know, everybody writing together when Andals came back and stuff. That was a fun time, too. I, I have good memories of putting Nothing Remains together back at the subtitle then. And, and then Resurrection. I mean, that was like a full band effort. I remember working on Resurrection, you know. That was when um, that was when I got happy again about everything. I, it was a very positive time in my life. And, um, you know, it was it was like that when I joined the band with Impossibility. And then I thought it came back around to that excitement with Resurrection, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with yeah. that record, I mean, it wasn't, you know, until uh, maybe not, um, maybe not the last record we did, because I wasn't involved. But but besides that, it was there was always excitement, you know. Um, I, I think um, there's there's a level of um, enthusiasm, yeah, enthusiasm when you're when you're so young and you're just you have nothing else going on in your life. Yeah, it's gonna be thrown into something. Totally. And we had like no one had anything else going on in their lives. That was, um, was the focus. Yeah, yeah. We were we were all focused. I had never. That's that's the chemistry. When when people ask you or ask me, what does it take? When we say it takes, I remember being hundred percent. What we mean is, there's there's nothing else going on in your life. This is your focus, and yeah. that's what we had. Like I had never at Christ with ascension with ringworm with with anyone i had never been in a band that was so focused as camira was when i joined the band yeah that was dope that, and, that, that was just a chemistry that was like you couldn't even try to write yeah so. i agree and that's and that's probably why how we got lucky or how we were able to move up a notch you know just uh because of that focus and stuff and that's definitely what it what it takes you don't know it at the time because it came natural to us you know just like yeah. hey, this is all of us wanted to do so that, that was it great. was just happening we weren't we weren't trying I mean, <laughs> or, but we weren't you know it just we knew we had to work hard or whatever but but yeah, yeah. i mean the, there was no problem with that hey yeah. just jamming remember the bud light ceiling what was that that so <laughs> the bud light ceiling was um so during the self-titled writing session me you and tally like it was each day of the week it was i'd bring a 12 then it was your day to bring a 12 <laughs> in our case or whatever and so and we started saving all the cases and gluing them to the ceiling. And we made, you know, the ceiling at the studio was probably like, I don't know, five no percent way. big thing. But we started in a corner and started how putting did I, it there. How did I forget that? How did I forget it so good? <laughs> it just got annoying to put them all up there because I was putting them up there with hot glue. And the hot glue would call it, all the strings would be coming down and stuff. And it was just, but we got a good, like, you know, like 
100 square foot section of Bud Light ceiling done. We wanted to take pictures. Are you drinking iCabs? Because you you look too fit to drink iCabs. Oh man, I'm uh, I'm I'm on the wagon in a uh, little over nine weeks now. So yeah. what's that? I'm on the wagon a little over nine weeks now. Okay, so so I yes. haven't. I, I'm still drinking, but I haven't had an iCab nah. in at least a month, maybe two. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get 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 in the whole, you know. Trying to work out, trying to trying to eat, eat right, so I'm like, I just miss him though. Well, if you're not drinking beers, what are you drinking then? Oh, just, a, just vodka. Oh, okay, right, right, good. good one good. shot of vodka. Yeah, I would love one, <laughs> but that's 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 my problem anymore. I can't have one. If I have one, I'm gonna have a thing though, and that that makes you uh, eat wrong. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. I mean, you, you you're definitely going to the gym. I can tell. I've been going to the gym now. Hey, thanks. And uh, yeah. yeah. It's rough. <laughs> it's rough. I like it, but waking up at 5 a.m. every day sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, you hear it, the hangovers get harder as you're older. It's definitely true, at least for me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'll still drink, you know, vodka. I'll still drink wine every now and then. But, uh, but yeah, I can drink like we did. Um, I will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> those, those, are, those are the days. Yeah, absolutely. A lot uh, of people. If we drink on stage and stuff, and I say it, it, it evolved to where oh, we were too God. serious. That's and then people too, they're like, "You drank before you went on stage." And I'm like, "Me and Rob would get drunk <laughs> before you went on stage," and <laughs> I don't remember certain shows, and I know Rob doesn't either, and that's yeah. not necessarily a good thing, but it's fucking funny. <laughs> do, do you remember, um, like, when we first started playing with uh, Six Feet Under, and? Um, and like first couple shows, like me and you would be having cocktails beforehand. And I remember like, I think Kevin told us this. Kevin Talley said that Steve came up to him and was like, those guys are drinking before the show? And oh. Talley's like, Rob and Matt? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and, it was a normal occurrence. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know anyone that didn't drink before they went on stage. And we got Steve into it. Steve started getting it. We, we like, we ruined him, you know? <laughs> and now he's not in the band anymore. Uh-oh. No. no. Steve is such a great guy. Love you, Steve. Oh, I love Steve. He's so fucking awesome. I, I ended up seeing him in in Tampa not too long after I left the band. No shit. Because I went up there for um, Mayhem or something. We hung out. It was awesome. That dude's so cool. I yeah. love that guy. I wonder what he's doing. What they're doing anymore. Are they still playing or six feet? Yeah. Or, well, Swanson hasn't been in six feet for a long time. Oh, okay. A couple records. So. He's doing then. But uh, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. But I think I, last I heard, Barnes was doing vocals for a new Six Feet. You know, obviously, COVID screwed everything up. Everybody's plans. Yeah, no know? doubt. So, uh, so I'm not. Re- I'm not. I'm not really even sure. You know, it's like you're like in a, a you know, a COVID free zone. <laughs> in, a bunker. in a bunker. I love it. That, I wish I had that background. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, it's looking good. What I used to tell. I wanted to tell you. What I used to tell Todd Bell when he was when he was filming us for DVDs, yeah, Todd, when you edit this, just make me look cool as fuck, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this, Rob, just make me look cool. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, promise I will, and that's hard to mess up because, <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I thought you were cool since the first time I saw you. <laughs> so. That's a, that's what's so funny is you're not that much younger, but. Um, it seems like there's a gap in scenes, like within a couple of years. Like it seems so much younger, but you're not that much younger. Like, I, yeah, yeah just, I know, but but totally. I mean, when you're when you're 15 and the 18, 19 year olds are up there right. doing what you want to do, right? And right. guys singing along and stuff, and it's, it's so the best. Yeah, you want yeah. That. yeah. You want that yeah. more and more, and so. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that we came together and did it together. Absolutely. And all, all these, uh, all the memories that we have. With all the guys, Mark, Andles, Chris, Tally, Ricky, everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, a lot of, lot of people. Yeah, been a lot, through a lot, all, all, a lot of cool, yeah, a lot of cool people. No doubt, a lot of cool crew, man, a lot of cool, a lot oh, of cool friends. Yeah. Everybody, all the label people and everything like that, it's been, it's been quite a, quite a journey and quite a connection, you know, that we've been, we've been lucky to get on. Like Mark Morton said, he got lucky, we got lucky too, you know? Yeah, that's what, we, that was so cool when he said that, I'm like... You know, and he meant it too. He's like, "Yeah, we got lucky. Like y'all worked as hard as we did." And I know we did, but at the same time, you know, you never know what the chemistry is. Yeah. But uh, it was—I appreciated that he said that. Yeah, for sure. So, 
Who knows if we'll cross paths with them again one day. That's what, that's what I just say to everybody. You never know. You never know what the, uh, what the future holds. You got a record up here? Do I? Um, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I could, you know, um, you know, and everybody wants to know that, I'm sure. Uh, and, and Mark and I, you know, we were talking and we were talking about how we were going to um, start talking to you about, you know, sending riffs up just to get us up working on. And then we would all get together and start working on them. And then COVID hit and we just yeah. stopped, stopped talking about it. Yeah. You know, so that's. I got some. That's, I got some. Good. We got a good. couple. What do you. I got, you, you, got, you got, got riffs. You got songs. <laughs> that's what we need riffs to pull them in what is your recording what are your record, recording capabilities at the moment anything no you know what i don't have anything new um i used to record on pro tools etc i used to uh have a little rig but i got nothing now besides my my laptop which is all you need when it comes down to it um but at the same time eh, i'm gonna i'm gonna start building i think um a little mini studio again so we'll see I think you could get it done for like a hundred bucks, man. You know, I'm hearing what these like uh, I forget what they're called, Scarlet, the Focus Right or Scarlet Ones or something like that. It's like just one channel. All you need, it's just yeah. an interface to get into your computer. Oh, you, you know, they come get with your computer and, and they come with the plugins. You get the different plugins for for tone, yeah. whatnot. And there's, yeah. there's free, free plugins too. Good, good sound and distortion plugins. Um, yeah. that you could get, you know, and uh, and you got connections too. I'm sure Mark Lewis would hook you up with his. Can you imagine being being us like uh, being this day and age. When we started, and having all the opportunity that these kids have, <laughs> be nice. Insane. Can you imagine what kids would what kids would say if when they found out that Matt DeVries doesn't have any amp, an amp at his house? <laughs> <away from himself? laughs> they call me a noob. Well, uh, well, you got an acoustic back there. That's good. Yeah, That's yeah, good. yeah. That one's been it. Uh, God, I had that for like twenty five years, thirty years. That's an old one, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Good Camaro posters. What is it? My mom got me at a, at a garage sale. The nice. one, only ones I kept. Nice. Yeah. All right. Last big question. All right. I'm ready. Uh oh. How many? How many? How many MFA 600s do you still have? How many are floating around? People are looking for those too. I don't even know. And you know what? I, actually, when when we, we when we last talked, or what was it? Was it when we last talked? Um. You haven't seen two of them, right? Here, I got the I got I got the one sig. You got this one. You see that one? Is that the, with the gold hardware? I can't really tell yeah, on the light. Yeah, with oh. the gold hardware and the and, and you know it's got that. Damn, that is nice. Uh, and then and I got the silver one. Give me a sec. Let me grab it. God, that's dusty. Jesus. You grab a pick too. You got to at least play a rip for us. Right, give me give me a sec. We'll wait, right? We're about to get some Matt DeVries riffs here. We'll wait. I don't want to play it if it's out of tune, Rob. Hold up. Hold the fucking phone, Rob. All right, so I'm going to play my son's signature pick. Cool. I've got a couple of those here at the house. That's from I don't know how many years ago. You've seen that. Yeah. And then this is... Oh, man. That is tight. I like that. You like the maple? Yes. Yeah. I can't. It's out of tune. <laughs> How long have you had those? Um, God, you know what's funny about those? What's not even funny? I was kind of pissed, but <laughs> when I talked to uh, Todd from was it Todd? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we. I was out with Rear Factory, and I was talking to Todd. He's like, you know what? I think we, I think we did receive those. I don't know how long they were there, and he's like, "Here you go." <laughs> like, I had gone to ESP just asking about something else. He's like, "Oh, we got these." I'm like, "You fucking!" And you know how long they take? They take like six months. So I'm waiting like I don't know how many months. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. So, um, but those are my two mains, and then I, you know. <laughs> cool. Let's, uh, are you are you one? Uh, is it too out of tune to play us uh, uh, some malignant or some um, some oh, paralyzed? God. Paralyzed is always. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorite MFA riffs. Oh. 
God. Malignant? Really? I don't know, Rob. I, I don't know. We're going to have to save that for another uh, another podcast or a <laughs> YouTube interview. <laughs> All right. 15 minutes? <laughs> All right. Give me 15. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Half hour? Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. That's 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 good, man. I wasn't <laughs> expecting to see two MFAs. I'm gonna ask you to snap a couple photos of those too, so I can okay. in some good well, light. Let me, some, let me get some pro shots so you can put them on. Yeah, pro shots. All right, yeah, have, yeah have, you know, <laughs> fly tied out. You know? Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, well, I I, I appreciate uh, appreciate your time. I'm glad we got to catch up here and check in. And I, I know everybody's gonna be stoked on this. I can't wait. I haven't told anybody that we're doing it yet. It's gonna be a little surprise. Episode 15 here, and not that 15 is usually a big marker, but it is for me. And uh, it's going to be uh, the MFA, the MFA Chronicles here, you know? All right, cool. So we should do it like once a week. <laughs> once a week? You want to? Every odd episode. You'll be 15, 17, 19, 21. Yeah, you ask. Think? You could do it like um, a little segment, like Ask MFA. It'll be like five seconds. Okay. Five minutes, whatever you want. That's that's cool. I, I ask Mark every once in a while, and I'll do that for you. Even we can do it through text yeah. sometimes. I don't even have to disturb Mark's you with that. Mark's not as cool as me, just saying. <laughs> what you say? Mark's not as cool as me, you know what I mean? Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a little poll, like, ask, ask people, who should we ask, Mark or Matt, on this one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the lifelines, the Mark or Matt lifelines. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. I like no, it. I'll, Hey, I appreciate it, man. Hopefully the next time, well, if people don't see us together on here again, maybe it'll be on the stage. That's all. Whatever number it'll be, I don't know, 16 would be the next one, you know. Um, yeah. Man, this could have been the year, but uh, blame COVID. So yeah. we'll uh, we'll see for next one, you know. But, yeah. uh, Absolutely. Hey, good luck to you and work and your health and everything there. Tell your boys hi and hope uh, hope all's well, and um, we'll, uh, we'll do it again, man. I appreciate it. All right, likewise. Thank you, Rob. All right, Matt. Good to see you. Take it easy, man. Appreciate it. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Matt's such a cool guy, isn't he? I mean, I just love his energy and uh, his his positivity because I share that same type of thing. You know, we were guys on the road. We, you know, when we'd wake up, it'd be smiles right away. Hey, get some coffee. Blah 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 blah. You know, not in the city as he explained there, but just on the bus, whatever. Um, but you know, we're we're always doing cool stuff together. Just just having a good time. Um, and anyways, if you made it this far, totally appreciate it. If, uh, if you like what you saw here and obviously you did, if you've made it this far, please give the video a thumbs up. appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Um, also want to let you know my DVDs, my, uh, my instructional DVDs are going really fast. Um, I think it was a few episodes of the, of the quick riffs ago that, uh, I mentioned that I had these DVDs and that really set things off. I guess people didn't even know about it or whatever. So I got a couple boxes of them at my studio and they're going quick. I'm sending out one or two a day here. So if you're interested in my guitar instructional DVD packed with all sorts of cool tips and tricks for metal guitar playing and soloing and things like that, check it out. I'll send you an autograph copy personalized, however you'd like it there. Um, also, if you're a Kemper owner, I've got a custom Kemper profile pack with ToneCrate.com, all the classic Camaro tones. Check that out. Check out their website, ToneCrate.com. Uh, you can see that. Um, I know that there's going to be some uh, elite merchandise on sale right now. Maybe I'll link the uh, the code here for the 4th of July, so that's just a temporary thing, but uh, check that out in the description below. Um, again, everything I'm talking about here is in the description below, such as my Patreon campaign, where dudes like you can get involved and help support the show, which really helps me keep all of this going. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are already involved, and everybody who's been a part of the channel, interacting, subscribing, liking the videos, all that kind of stuff. It means a ton to me. If you'd like a custom shout out, you can also hire me on Cameo, cameo.com slash Rob Arnold World. People's birthdays, anniversaries, whatever, I just pop in, maybe strum a riff and say what's up. So again, that's cameo.com and you can find me there. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this one. I hope you'll be back with another episode sooner than later. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate everybody. Cheers and I'll see you on the next one.